Hey everybody, Mattel Simber here with a little behind the scenes video for CyberScrap 2.0. Show you how a couple of these things work here. I think everybody nailed down most of the things and how they work. Um, there may be a couple of things that you all were not aware of, but it seems like everybody pretty much figured out the bike and how the bike winds up stopping when it gets to the gray texture up there. Really, that was supposed to be like wet cement that it gets stuck in. Um, so there's a reason that you cannot go backwards with this bike, um, but I did put in some suspension glitch to make it so that it was easy to turn around. Um, and really, you're just supposed to drive it forward until it gets stuck anyway. So the forward button on the controls, so W, instead of just connecting directly to the engine or the thruster on the back, actually connects to a little piston in here that moves the um, piston that moves the sensor up. So when the sensor is activated, then the bike moves. The, so the sensor activates the actual uh, thruster and the engine. Um, this guy right here is color-coded, and there's some logic built in that says when this is off and this one is on, then it goes. So if that one's on, it does not go. So that's why it stops when it hits the gray up there. The other two sensors are for just correcting it with some more suspension glitches, the, the classic bike build that you see in a lot of stuff online. So that's the bike. I think everyone figured that one out. I noticed on this level when it started getting really big, just on this first one, for some reason, could not figure out exactly what was causing the lag when you actually played this level. So I made it so um, you actually, when a glass block is destroyed, I figured out the frame rates shot back up. So I made this device that shoots a glass block about once every second. I have no idea why that works, just scrap mechanic physics, put plenty of spuds in here, and uh, should last people the whole level, seeing as how much glass is there. So, don't know why it works, but it did. Uh, I tried many things to try and get that to resolve the lag issue. It's not perfect, but um, it helps. Okay, so the famous spud container cannon thing. Uh, <laughs> so the big sensor that's used in challenge mode picks up on certain things, usually creations that are not directly connected to the ground. Um, not really sure how to explain it, but basically this container does activate this sensor that's under here. Um, so I made it so that if this switch is pressed, which sends the container down here, and it's all the way up here to where the sensor is activated by that container, you got your AND logic that goes all the way out here. Okay, so if both of those are activated, then it tries to activate this spud gun. This spud gun, if you got one spud in that container, it's going to shoot it once and that's it, because that cardboard breaks it, also breaks the connection with this switch right here. So the switch then uh, changes the logic to the... <laughs> I did this way more complicated than it needed to be, but I like to do things kind of quick and dirty to make it work and move on. Uh, this is... so it activates this here, which I like to call a piston lock. The reason that I have it set up like a piston, and sometimes I even have it two spaces away, is because when these levels load in challenge mode, sometimes if you just have logic gates, they'll flicker real quick and activate it and not turn off. So it'll totally screw things up for your entire level. Um, so the piston makes it so that it takes just a little bit of time before it pushes out and then is basically permanently locked by this motion set or by the sensor. You see, I, I have the what I call the, the piston lock set up as an OR gate, um, and then the piston activates whether the OR gate or the motion sensor is activated. So the input goes to the OR gate, and then your motion sensor here uh, activates whatever you want to. Um, so then I can't remember exactly why, but I had it so that a controller would. <laughs> <laughs> activate this sensor. I swear I wasn't trying to make it more difficult than it needed to be. Okay. 
and then just basically triggers everything else. So I think you could figure it out from there if you were trying to recreate it, but that's the gist of it. Okay. The car lot was pretty easy. One thing that was funny was uh, Scrapman kind of missed the fact that you once you get this car, you can just drive it straight out. That was that was the intent, but I, I get why he did what he did. Um, let's see. So the car shop, I mean the the confetti was easy because I just had to make this shoot out from a certain distance, and it just goes through a wall because it's a um, you know, it's just a, a, a for looks. It's not an actual object passing through anything. Um, it was a little tricky to make it so that this thing would stop rotating only when the car was facing forward. So if I go ahead and activate my piston lock, that car comes up. So that stops it and there's logic built in to stop the engine so it doesn't keep rolling. And what you saw there was if, if the challenge mode were running, those glass blocks would have been destroyed and then that little piece would have been pushed up to help cover that hole that was created. So it's not completely seamless, but, you know, for the most part. I really wanted to create this car out of the Coyote from Cyberpunk 2077. A little bit difficult. I also learned that if you start with the wheels going straight down, then the car does a bit of a crazy hydraulic thing and sometimes flipped over. That's why they start backwards and look kind of weird like that. But it works. And then to make sure that it you have a car, it's got these spaced out just right so that you have to activate both of them at the same time before you can exit the level. One of the things that's kind of tricky, the pistons that control this barrier to come down um, sometimes would just get stuck, especially if you tried to ram this before you actually completed everything that would lower the ramp. So again, just like my anti-lag device in the background, um, <clears throat> created another one. And this is uh, one of these is for the first barrier. One of them is for the second barrier. So, if you have something in challenge mode that is not lowering because a piston is stuck and you're not sure why, try creating something that will just destroy a cardboard block off in the distance. Um, takes like one, two, maybe three sometimes, but it'll it'll go down. Sometimes it'll cause a little bit of a delay until those blocks are uh, destroyed off in the distance too. Like, see this right here. Now, what if I do that? So, that's one way to help resolve it. Just another weird, uh, quirky scrap mechanic thing to work around. The puzzle here in the construction yard is pretty self-explanatory, I think. The, um, once all four of the devices are off, then you can send the elevator up. And then there's just a sensor that's triggered when this thing is dropped down by pushing the button up there and then that makes this ramp come down. Now one of the challenges was actually keeping this ramp up and making it so that it reliably came down when it was supposed to. There are small holes in each side of uh, this ramp so that those release and uh, hopefully it was pretty seamless when this ramp dropped. But um, as you know, bearings can only hold up so much I'll show you when you just remove this. Take that one out. Take that one out.
there you go the ramp lowers this lowers and then you drive on to area three if you ever have any circling lights any repeating logic anything like that at all you kind of have to make it so that it activates when you first come into the level so here's the sensor that activates and then here's one of my little uh, piston locks that will activate the reason is if if that is active like if you just leave it on when you finish saving the level and you come back in to play it it's going to be all kinds of weird because again scrap mechanics is weird um, it'll do a little bit of a flicker and it will not be a smooth seamless rotation like that so on on this one the logic spider is pretty real this is probably one of the more complex things that I've ever made in the game but the logic to make it so that you could get the one that costs 10 20 50 and 100 and not do it out of order that that was that was kind of challenging for me but um, I always enjoy a good challenge so it's just a series of if this then that but this and not that type of logic and making sure that each one was locked in when it happened and locked in at the appropriate time too um, so I won't get too much into the specific logic of that because I probably couldn't remember off the top of my head and also um, it, it would take a while to explain all of it so the car moving this this is not uh, free-floating thing um, try to keep things very controlled to eliminate any error uh, this one is actually attached to a, a piston on the ground if you can see that little pipe right there and uh, used a little bit of a, a trick that you can do with pistons not having any collision you create whatever you want to with the uh, piston and then you just kind of seal it up there you go so you can see it glitching through a little bit there but I think it serves its purpose so um, that that piston doesn't move it just acts as something that moves through that surface unimpeded and there's a piston underneath that actually moves it so I, I try to use the bubble block for something that's light just to you know, cut down on any possible weight issues and then the glass because it's a smooth surface yeah so that's that's to help guide that along there so it's as smooth as possible um, these bots were a pretty late addition <laughs> um, I was really hoping that they were going to put bots in the game with the ability to spawn them in challenge mode before I wanted to release this but uh, I think the results wound up being pretty funny. One of my friends said that it was haunting their dreams, so uh, that's a win in my book. And yes, there is a car that comes across here. You're not going to see it in this mode because it requires blocks to be destroyed, but there is actually uh, a bike that goes across and two police vehicles trying to chase it. Um, so this is very difficult to time. Um, I, in theory, I could have done more than one but then you also run into the limitations with everything else going on here in this level. I don't know what everybody else's rigs are like, so I, I like to make things playable first and then make them pretty if possible. And yes, most people were able to guess how the bearings became loose, uh, connected to a controller that just gets shot loose uh, when a spud gun shoots through a piece of cardboard. So, uh, I just created one, saved it on the lift, uh, just a, a board that has the spud gun and the logic and the controller, and then when that gets shut off, the arms go limp. That's it. Alright, Cyberspace Limbo, everybody's favorite level, right? Uh, so I was, I was surprised that nobody was curious about how I did the... Uh, different respawn locations so uh, the start pad because it's bound to your character when you start the level actually rotates around on this thing and goes to each one as you progress through it so um, when you go through each one of these shoots it moves it to the next area that's that's just how it works so you got uh, four different locations 
uh, copied and pasted each one of them and then just kind of changed the color and some of the details within each one of them. But um, yeah, the, the intent was to kind of confuse people a little bit, trying to make it like, oh, you're in this limbo. But um, I don't know how much of it actually translated into the reality of what, what you were doing in the game. Uh, so yes, the box is the same box within um, all of the different areas. So it's just a shared corner with those rooms. Not a whole lot else to explain in here unless anybody was curious about anything in particular, but uh, this is what the outside of the Matrix Limbo area looks like. And then of course it's completely encased. So at the end you can see those numbers for the code. The sensors in here, um, I, I didn't really try to hide these too much because uh, those are color sensors and I wanted it to line up with a specific shade of gray so that you knew so that the garage actually knew when it was lined up and at that point once you had hacked in to uh, be able to crush the car and reveal this button once you hit that button uh, and the car is in there then it would do its thing Bye-bye. Now if the game is actually, if the challenge is running, it actually falls into an abyss. And my thinking was it would no longer actually be a part of the level as far as I could tell. And would hopefully cut down on some lag. So I don't know if that theory is true. It seemed to help with the frame rate. But there you go. That's the the car being upgraded. Um, and the, the thing with the compactor, it you know, the bottom level comes down after the top one meets it, and then they move down at the same time just to create that illusion of it being crushed. I don't think that was much of a mystery to most people, but just wanted to confirm that. All right, and then taking your upgraded car and blowing up this barricaded wall to gain access. I think everybody kind of figured out it was just a series of sensors and explosions, uh, explosives taking this area out. That's basically all it was. Um, you know, peel this back so you can see. That's the explosives, and then there's a couple more here and there. Nothing really too complicated. The boss fight. This is the first one that I had made out of any of these. And it was just a lot of fun. It was something that kind of motivated me to finish making the rest of it. So you can see that dude pops up. Um, he was just on a series of pistons. So that part was similar to the... Let me get out of the way here. <laughs> um, so that mech being pushed out was very similar to that car being moved. Just got a piston in the floor and moved him out. Just shoved him out. Here you have the hit point counter with some logic and pistons. Alright, the final level. Um, I was a little disappointed Scrapman didn't just run and gun this one. But, and I admit, it's probably confusing that you have those dudes up there with the red lights on their guns and you cannot blow them up, but I just thought that everybody would run through and do something you know, like this. Alright, so that blows up, and then you got this cannon over here that actually tries to shoot your car. And that will mess up your car if you let it. And then this police car comes. That's fairly random whether that gets hit or not. Got more dudes shooting at you, and then that's the end. So the other thing I was a little surprised by, uh, nobody's really curious about how this thing is flying so smoothly while not being attached to anything. This is something that I did find out uh, through some kind of a, a bearing glitch just in challenge mode, and I can show you that. This is also how the floating billboards work, which nobody really was surprised by that or wondered how that worked. Um, I guess nobody realized that it was like 
a thing because those billboards in uh, level three, those are not attached to anything. Those are just free floating in the air, just like this guy right here. But this one is a little bit different. Uh, so those those engines are not keeping it up. Um, I made a platform that has a little bit of a, a bearing glitch. So I guess the thrusters are moving it now, but um, see if you have something attached to a bearing on a lift, like if you do this, 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 and this. You got something with a bearing attached to a bearing. Put it on a lift, and I'm not going to do it now because it would mess up my game save, but if you do save before exiting, yes. Not save and test, save before exiting, yes. Just come all the way out of it, and then when you come back in, this will just be floating in the air. I figured it out when I was making my bikes and accidentally left one up on the lift and it was just kind of stuck floating there and I was thinking, well, what's actually keeping this from falling? And then realized as soon as I had disconnected something that was connected to one of the bearings, the thing fell. So, well, there goes that guy. But anyway, uh, let me know if you have any other specific questions. I really enjoyed making this, really enjoyed watching Scrapman play it and seeing everybody else's comments and questions. So, um, if I do another one of these, it probably is going to be after the next update, because uh, I, I do have some ideas, but I feel like for the most part I've kind of exhausted what I can do at this point. Um, but it doesn't mean that I won't do another one. So thank you for watching. I hope that you got something out of this, and you have a good one.